Welcome back, boys and girls. Guess where I am? I'm at the Bodega Bay Trailhead today, and it's beautiful. I mean, there's no wind. I've come out here several times and wanted to film, and it's just like a hurricane. So you wouldn't be able to hear anything except wind noise. And today it's like perfect. It's kind of funny because it's a calm before the storm. We got a big atmospheric river rolling in, which all the news people want to say. Uh, but they're predicting um, three to four inches of rain in the next two days. That's a good amount of rain. Anyway, let's look around and explore the Bodega Bay trailhead here. And yes, Hitchcock did film the birds in this town also. Uh, but that's not at this location. All right, come along. Wow, look how beautiful it is here. Holy crap. It's kind of a long way down there, so I'll be very careful. I don't think he'd survive that fall. Um, but wow, what a beautiful day. It's stunning out here, I tell you. If you're brave, looks like people have hiked down there. I am not that brave, thank you. I'll hold the camera out over the edge with the extension pole and you can take a look. Pretty far down. Look at the water. It's nice and clear too. It's not all murky today. And you got the little area of brown foam. Foam scum. All right, let's see what else we can find. A little sandstone here. Oh yeah, I read about this. This little um, monument is a tribute to the fallen fishermen that have fished for hundreds and hundreds of years off this coast and this is supposed to be the front of the ship so it's um, a cool thing that they did to acknowledge the fishermen this site was created as a tribute to our men and women who made their living from the sea and a memorial to those who have lost their lives to it. Bodega Bay Auxiliary for Fisheries. Sometimes, sometimes this fishing stuff can be very dangerous and I'm sure everybody's seen those crab shows in Alaska. Well, this isn't quite that crazy, but it gets there out here on a foggy day. I don't know if you can see, but there's a seagull drinking puddle water there. He's all, this is pretty good. I like this puddle water. It's got a little dirt mixed into it. It's not your normal puddle water. Well, if you think about it, if you think about it, he's a seagull and he flies around getting salt water in his mouth all the time. And this is nice, fresh rainwater. So that's why he's really excited about it. Doesn't trust me too much. He's moving on. And there is a sign here. Oh, there he goes. You know, wouldn't it be cool to be able to fly? You see how he just ran off the cliff? <laughs> uh, maybe in some other lifetime. Uh, this is uh, a beat up sign. It was just an old picture of an old fishing vessel. Chinook salmon. It's 
go around this corner. This is ice plant. This is not native. And it's an invasive species. And boy, does it take over. Now, in the springtime, it has yellow and like lavender flowers that are pretty nice, but it's still invasive. Now, over here, you got a nice little beach there that you can also hike down to. And you see right straight ahead the hole in the rock. That's pretty cool. A little carve out of the rock. Now, if I only saw a whale right now or something, that would be neat, huh? Wow. I'm going to just hold the camera here for about 10 seconds so you can enjoy the beauty. That is um, stunningly beautiful, I tell you. It never gets old. I grew up here and coming to the ocean is, uh, is, you know, it's very beautiful. And I know I'm lucky living in Northern California here along close to the coast. This took me um, about, it's about an hour to drive out here from my house. Not too far to go to some of the most beautiful places there are in the world, Northern California coast. But what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna um, walk along a little more cliffs and then I'm gonna go down. There's another area coming up that you can go down to the beach. Maybe we can do a little tide pool action, see if we can find any starfish. Yeah, so I'm gonna head down there. This area right behind me seems to be where everybody wants to go and check out. So we're going to go check that out right now. And there she blows. There she blows. This is a whale watching area. And you can see them at a certain time of year, which would be spring coming up. A little early for that now. All right. Well, this is the spot where everybody was. It is There's some of those purple flowers. If any of you are clam chowder lovers, there's two amazing clam chowder restaurants right next to each other. One's Spud's Point, the other one's called Fisherman's Cove. And they both have their absolutely delicious clam chowder. And it's on the way to the Bodega uh, Trailhead or Head to where we are. So I'd highly recommend going to one of those if you come out here. Here is another sign conserving California's treasures. You are here inside that square. Dogs not allowed on park trails. Hey, look at this, they got steps. Try not to fall on my ass just now. It's more of that ice plant. Some of you watching this will remember the movie The Blob. And this ice plant reminds me of The Blob. For those of you who didn't see the movie, it's literally like, um, what is that stuff that everybody used to make in school with Elmer's glue and uh, slime. Slime. So The Blob was a movie filmed in the 50s, way before we invented slime. And it was about a giant blob of slime, basically, that oozed everywhere and killed people. It's actually a pretty entertaining movie to watch, if you ever want to check it out. Um, All right, reach the beach.
see what we can discover here. Some good old driftwood. That's a big mama piece of driftwood. Wow. It's even more gorgeous when you get closer. Well, it looks like it's low tide right now. Wants to get me. Get all the muscles on the rock here. Lots of them. All right, we need to find a sea anemone and a starfish. I already see sea anemones. You see those big ones over there? Let's get through this crevice here. Oh wait, look at these. See him moving? Yeah, there's a whole bunch of little ones on that rock. These are pretty, pretty big ones. And more mussels. Now this is an area that on high tide you would not be able to get through. Since it's low tide, we're good. This is cool. Muscle Cave. Wow. Very cool. He <laughs> wants to get me wet. <laughs> he wanted to get me wet. I was like, no. That was close. Get all the muscle shells. See them all? Pretty big one. All right, you see any starfish? I'm looking for starfish. Time the waves here. There's another tide area. Now this would be a place we might spot a starfish. Oh, there's one. You see right there. Purple starfish. There's another one. And there's a good size too. I don't see any orange starfish though. Alright, okay, here comes the tide. Now you can see that purple starfish. Oh, there's a good one. Can you see that one and that one? There's two down there. It's got covered by the water. This is like the perfect place for a starfish to hang out. Here's a tide pool. Wow, look at that sea urchin. See an enemy there. That one's huge. Let's go check that out. You see it there? That's a good like 10 inches wide round. It's a good one. I would poke it, but the, the water is looks like it's about a foot deep to reach it. I don't want to get my arm all wet. Okay, you want to see these guys in action? Watch. See that? 
They alive. It's alive. It's alive. When you touch them, they're like it's like touching uh, masking tape. They have a stickiness to them, and that's how they grab their food. I think I'd have to call this uh, Muscle Island, not Muscle Beach in Venice. This is Muscle Island because I'm literally walking on muscles that are still alive. And there's another sea urchin. Or sea an enemy. Urchins are the purple round ones. Comes the wave. Alright, we're gonna do one more little test here. Wherever you touch it, it moves. I don't want to touch it too much because it takes a while for them to open those things up. This is pretty wild walking on a sea of mussels. I'm still looking for that elusive starfish. And just, you know, a word of caution what I'm doing, you always want to keep your eye on the water. Not completely ignore your surroundings because there are such a thing as sneaker waves that are much larger than the average wave and they have been known um, to wash people off the rocks and if you get in that water you're screwed most likely you're screwed it's so cold that water here comes a bigger one see that was that was getting up there That one came ripping in. Look at this one. You see what I mean? The water can suddenly go from a regular wave to a bigger, much bigger wave. Man, it is really beautiful out here though. I don't want to give up on finding a starfish. So I'm going to keep hiking a little bit more. Growing up in this area, um, I would take field trips to the ocean and go tide pooling. And that is a very cool memory I have of growing up in Northern California. Here comes another wave. I think to get over to this rock, I gotta go around because this is all water coming in. So I'm around the corner. It looks like there's a little area here you can traverse over. Delicately, I might add. This is granite, so it's extremely grippy. The rock, it's not slippery. It's the opposite of slippery. So, to get around, I guess I gotta go around and down there. Okay, I made it down to the next level of the beach. All sorts of craziness going on here. Get all the mussels and the seaweed. And driftwood. It's like a walking stick. Piece of driftwood. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Driftwood walking stick. It's still cold, so it probably got deposited here recently. Anybody need a fiber uh, microfiber towel for their car?
Okay. All right. Look at that cave. That's pretty cool. I think it, that cave is saying, walk through me, walk through me. Wow. Very neat. And you see this seaweed. Starts here. It's all the way down. Keeps going down. I've never really seen one this long. Usually they snap. To here. That's pretty damn... What, 45 feet, 50 feet? It's pretty big. All right, ah, we found them, the starfish. They're out, there they are. Awesome. There's two more, ooh. And check this out, ta-da, orange, mighty orange. And another purple one, just hanging out. This rock is covered with the sea or the sea enemies. Ready? They're already kind of withdrawn. I'm just taking a look here before the why the water is out. There's another one there. The tide rolls out, gets me. <laughs> yep, would have got wet. Would have got wet. Wow, look at the colors of this abalone shell. Wow, that's beautiful. Look at that. Nature's beauty, huh? That's awesome. Now, when I was a little kid, I would have pried those off. But now that I'm older, I don't feel like messing with the wildlife like that. And that's a pretty big starfish, and the force I would need to take it off that rock would be a lot. But in this one shot, there's a one, two, three, four, five. I like the orange one a lot. And this guy, this guy's unusual because I think half of it's buried. Might need me to save it. You know, it just dawned on me. It was so close to sunset time. I'm probably going to have to stay and watch the sunset. So that'll be at the end of the video. So I'll keep checking it out. And we'll see the sunset a little later. Sometimes you just can't explain things. This is a piece of steel. Looks like quarter inch steel bolted to a rock right by the shore. If anybody knows why that's here, leave some message in the comment and educate us because I don't know why that would be here. Must have something to do with fishing, maybe. Thousands upon thousands, if not millions of mussels. So if you were in the Walking Dead environment, there'd be plenty of food there to eat. Or the uh, Naked and Afraid. Got a vulture up there just cruising, waiting for some carrion to chew on. I can't believe how, uh, how nice of a day it is. It's just, man, it's beautiful. Check this out. Didn't even see this guy hiding. See him in there? He's buried in the sand. So I imagine he's gonna wait to really high tide and loosen himself out of there. And this is the canal, wave canal. Here it comes.
the tide's coming in now. I have a feeling I'm going to get wet on the way out of here because the way I came in was a tide area. There's a good side wave. You see it rolling over? There's a, there's a crab shell. That's all that's left. No pinchers or anything. Is that a shark head? It's a shark head. Check it out. Look at the teeth. Oh, it's a, no, it's what do they call them? Monkfish? Look at the teeth of that guy. Razor sharp. Oh, well, I get bit by him, I'll tell you. Those are some sharp teeth. Well, boys and girls. Some of the sand I'm stepping in is like quicksand. Anyway, we're gonna go back up and start the sunset process. Look at the sandstone. How the wind has etched it out. Kind of looks like a miniature Grand Canyon. Okay, going back around the edge of the drop off. But it's granite rock, so it's solid. Oh, as long as you're walking solid, look at the glistening of it. it. Looks like gold, gold in there. Here, rocks. I changed my mind because I came around the corner and there was a young couple being romantic, and I didn't want to interrupt their um, romance. Okay, I made it. I get past. I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see what I'm looking at in a minute. It's really nice. Pretty awesome, huh? Now i got to pay attention to the tide now. Or I'll find myself stuck or getting wet. It's going to be an awesome sunset, I'll tell you that. Uh, check this out. It's a little like... I think it's a sea... What kind of sea urchin shell? That's a cool one. I decided to walk over to the south part of the beach here. Lots of sea urchins on the side and mussels. There's a little air, another little area. And oh, the water's real deep there. Look how it just drops off. It's like it looks like it's like 10 feet deep right there. And if you look close, straight ahead of me, there's more starfish. Looks like another purple one. Kind of hard to see, but there's one there. You see in there? That was a dark purple. These are all sea anemones. Look, touch them. You can get them all to move. You see that? They are going to need the water soon because they don't like sitting in sunlight with no water. Okay, as promised, the sunset in Bodega Bay, and as I thought it would be, it's pretty spectacular. Well, thanks for coming along with me today. I hope you liked the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit that bell notifications, and we'll see you on our next video. At the end of this video, if you want to watch the whole sunset, at the very end, I'm going to 
put the camera on a tripod and just let it roll so you can sit and watch the sunset. All right. <laughs>